G'day guys, it's TDX Raven here bringing you our first video over here at Big Raven Tech. Say g'day, Big Mick. Yo. That's not good, eh? Anyway, what we've got here today is my brand new, well it's not brand new, I've had it for a couple of weeks now, Asus P67 Sabertooth motherboard with its gorgeous thermal armor. And it says just here, thermal, a uh, little advertisement for the thermal armor is permanently on the thermal armor. So that's always fantastic. Right, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour around the board. Starting off with this top corner here, as you can see, we have the CPU 8 pin connector along with two fan controllers. You have uh, fan connectors, they're both um, four pin CPU fans. But you have to, this fan connector here, you have to have one plugged into that, or else the BIOS won't let you post, which is very annoying. Moving down a little bit, we have the MOSFET heatsink, and the, I think, I don't, I don't know which one's which. <laughs> because you can't see underneath this um, thermal armor. I'm pretty sure that either one's fine. You, everyone's just like, no, you're a noob. Right, but it's got eight plus two phasing with the, um, which is pretty damn good. <laughs> Over here, we've got the 1155 CPU um, socket. They're pretty normal. Right here, we have one Mushkin stick, which is installed as well as just, you know, triple channel, uh, dual channel DDR3 RAM up here. We have the memo K button, as well as another three pin fan connector. Moving over to here, we have the 24 pin. And if I I'll move this to here, um, underneath here is a spot for a 50, 50 millimeter fan, which should force more air underneath the thermal armor if you don't have good airflow in your case, but mine does because the temps are all good. Um, Moving over to this side, we have our USB 3.0 connector in a spot that I'm not really 100% on. I'd rather it be down with the other connectors like that. Down here we have a, um, a jumper. I'm pretty sure that's the Reset CMOS jumper. I don't like them on jumpers, but if you look, the battery is about here. <laughs> underneath the thermal armor, which means that if I ever did have to reset the CMOS, that's my only option. We have the front panel connectors which, like on most ASUS systems, is plugged in via one of them extension things. We have a COM port, and we have a little power light, which indicates whenever power is running through the board. Another fan connector, three USB 2s sockets, a SPDIF socket. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah, here's the Firewire, this is the SPDIF. Front panel audio, and then that's everything besides the PCI slot. So we have one, two, three PCI one times, which is plenty, and we have a PCI Express, a PCI Legacy slot, which I would never use. Um, I might if I get one of the ASUS Zonars, but because the Zonar PCI is supposed to be better than the Zonar PCI one times, and we've got two PCI Express slots. Um, this one here is in sixteen times, and this one here is in eight. Um, so if you're running SLA, it will be running at um, eight eight. I'm fairly sure, just going off memory. So you, of course you put your card in here. Oh, I almost forgot, we left out the SATA. So these three here are on the Intel chipset, and this one here is on a Maxell chipset. We have two SATA, two 3 gigabytes, and a SATA 6, like on all 1155 boards, besides micro RTX. And a SATA, uh, two SATA 6 running off the Marvel chipset. Okay, let's look at the final thing on every single board, and that's the I.O. Oh, hang on, I'll reposition the board so it gets light. Now, if my camera hand comes down here, as you can see, we've got a combo PS2 core for mouse and keyboard. These are pretty great, even though I don't have a keyboard that uses it. Uh, two USB 2.0s. These here are more USB 2.0s are red, because usually you think, oh, red means that it's the fast USB 2.0. No, it's normal. It's just normal. They just have it there. We have some optical audio, uh, two more USB 2.0s. Another two USB 2.0s, giving us a total of six, which is more than enough for me. Oh, six, and then these two red ones which are just there to look fancy and we got two eSATAs but this is an eSATA power and this is an eSATA connector so you do have room for eSATA power over here we got an RJ45 LAN connector as well as two USB 3's and two is also more than I'd ever use and uh, combined with the other USB 3 that gives you a total of four and seven channel audio so then that's run off a Realtek chip so that's a good tour of the board I'm going to show you how to plug some stuff into it because I, whenever I was on my other channel, my gaming channel, um, somebody, whenever I was doing videos, somebody asked me if they could show me, show them how to plug in RAM 
and a CPU. This is a i5-250K and it is absolutely brilliant for gaming. If you're just gaming, you don't actually need the i7, that's more for like hardcore video rendering and stuff. Right, so to install the CPU, you've got to line up, if you look down here on the socket, there's two little bulges on either side of the chip, just there and there. And if you look at the CPU, there's two little indents on either side. So you line them up and just place it in there gently. This next part isn't as gentle. <laughs> you close the socket and get it to slide in under that bolt there. And then you push down as hard as you can to get this thing here to go under the slot. The first time I did that I was really nervous. It took me a lot of time to realize I've got to put a lot of pressure on it. Okay, so RAM. This is Mush Mushkin Redline um, Enhanced RAM of this is a single 4 gig stick. This is another one. Give you a little bit of a look at the RAM. There's the main side, which is the one that I'd rather be facing outwards, but much can mess that up. Because there's the other side, which just has this on it, and I don't like having that. I might take that off if I could without tearing the sticker. One problem with the saber tooth was over the um, RAM, it had a sticker, for some reason, advertising the fucking board that we just bought. And when you took the sticker off, it was made of paper, so there's lots of there's lots of little bits of paper. So to install RAM in oh, sorry in a DDR3 ASUS um, quick quick install slot, this is the same as what MSI uses. You undo this clip, this one here is normal, and you slot it in around the right way. You line up this little indent here with this little gap just there. If you you probably can't see it in the video because I'm blocking all the light. There's some light. No, come here light. There you go. So as you can see, there's a little thing there, and if on the RAM chip, there's a little indent there. So you line them up, and you slot it in. This is a bit different different for me, because I've never had these before. I've only installed stuff in them once. You just push down a bit, and oh yeah, I'll put it on the board a bit better, so I get a bit more support behind it. Until you feel it slot in that side, then you push down this side and it should clip in like that. So now you have installed your RAM. You do that twice for the second RAM. Now this one here you install completely differently. <laughs> Not really. Um, and it's ready to be installed in the computer. And make sure you're going in the right channels. Yeah, this one here um, is the correct channels. Check your quick install guide, but usually it's the ones further away from the CPU to allow you to fit a bigger heatsink without touching the RAM. So, yeah. Cheers, guys.